Okay, so welcome. This will be the lab for induction motors. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set up my motor so it's Y connected. So I short one set of terminals. Uh, and close up, this looks like this. Now remember this induction motor over here is a three phase device. Any three phase device has six terminals. And so when you want this device to be Y configured, you will short one set of terminals and the other ones will be used for voltages going in. Okay, this would be the same if this was a three phase transformer bank, for example. All right, so I go ahead and set that up. Now, um, um, uh, next up is I want to actually be able to get data from my experiment. So I go ahead and set up that data acquisition module, which will give me my voltages and currents. And this is something we're used to. But I also hook up the dynamometer. A dynamometer is a device that tells you the torque and speed of your motor at the same time. So it's super useful, super handy. And we're gonna, I'm going to hook it up over here so I can get those values as well. All right, and that's the basic setup. So thumbs up to that. The first test I want to run is the DC test, which will tell me the resistance of my stator windings. And, you know, visually it will look like this in my head. All right, or I have this in my head. So uh, as long as your motor is Y connected, you just run DC uh, current into any two terminals and whatever comes out will be the current run through two sets of windings and that results in the equation up there. All right, so I just go ahead and set that up. The other thing to note is I'm gonna slowly raise the voltage until I hit rated current. That will be the idea. And so that's what I have over here. These are my results from the DC test, okay? So the next test I wanna run is the no load test. And when the no load test is exactly how it sounds, I'm gonna run the motor with no load attached to its shaft. And that's really important, okay? No load attached to the shaft. For some reason, last semester, we attached the dynamometer to tell us the speed at no load, but the dynamometer loads the motor. Okay, so anyways, when you're running no load, don't attach any load. And then I just go ahead and uh, run voltage into it. Okay, and as you can see, the motor sounds like it's spinning pretty fast. Um, uh, and actually, it's gonna be spinning very close to synchronous speed. Because there's no load, the motor is gonna keep going in its speed until it hits very close to that synchronous speed, okay? So that's just uh, something about any uh, uh, motor with no load. And then I just note down the values I get, and I stop the uh, voltage from coming in. And here are my results, okay? One thing I wanna note right away is look at the currents, okay? I'm getting about 0.6 amps per phase. Uh, for the motor when it's under no load. For um, uh, motors, this is actually pretty high, but induction motors tend to have high current when you have no load at the, sh uh, at the shaft uh, compared to other motors, okay? Uh, and also notice that this is gonna be the lowest the induction motor current is going to be when you run 120 volts into it. As the load increases, this current is gonna go up, okay? Uh, the other thing I wanna note is look at that 40 watts over there. This 40 watts gives you an idea of how much friction and windage losses are there in the motor. Because there's no load, the only you know, power being consumed here is whatever is needed to overcome uh, uh, the friction and windage losses. So the friction and windage losses over here will be close to 40 watts. It's gonna be a little less, but about 40 watts. Okay, then the last test I wanna run is the locked rotor test, which is the opposite of the no load test. I'm gonna have my motor held exactly in place and I'm gonna place a load on it. So that's what I'm doing over here. I'm mechanically coupling it to the dynamometer and I'm gonna set the load on the dynamometer to max and I'm, uh, raise the, I'll raise the voltage going into the motor until I hit rated current, okay? And so here are my results. Notice that at a third of the way of rated voltage, rated voltage is 120, this is about 40 volts, I'm already pretty much at rated current, okay? And that gives you an idea that if the, vol if the motor was running at 120 volts and for whatever reason it stalled, the current going into it is gonna go super high, okay? And that will very easily damage the motor or worse. So that's something super important to note um, about motors, okay? So stalling a motor is pretty bad. And when you run this test, you definitely do not put rated current. You don't put 120 volts if you run this test. And obviously you guys are at home, but anyways, just a general note, all right? Uh, and so I go ahead and, and note down these quantities over here. I'll see you in a second. Okay, and the last thing I wanna do is I wanna have a torque speed curve for my motor. So I go ahead, same setup as the locked rotor test, except I'm gonna change the load, loading from no load to max load in small increments. 